Welcome back. We, we've wrapped up week five. This is week six. And we just finished chapter one exam. There were 20 multiple choice questions. And I had some students that did outstanding. I had some students that made 100, 95, 90. I had some students that didn't do so well. I think many of you thought that this was just super simple and you, you weren't paying close attention. I'm disappointed with your grades for those of you that didn't put forth the effort. Please understand, this is a high school credit course. The bar has been raised. The expectations are higher. You have to earn this credit. It will not be given to you. I'm here to help you to explain things, but I can't do it for you. This is your job. I will work with you as much as you're willing to put forth the effort. But when I see exams that are below, below expectations, I can't do much. These count as a test grade, which means it's harder to pull the grade up. I'll try to give you some more homework assignments and some more um, in-class assignments to help bring it up. But it's up to you. Please understand, like I said, this course is high school credit. You have to earn that. Now, we're going to start here on Chapter 2. I'm going to pause the video for a moment and pull that up. All right, lesson one, dealing with software categories. This is chapter two, lesson one. We've got a video here that I really need you to pay close attention to, people. Many times I see y'all are just daydreaming. You're not paying attention. You're messing around. You're talking to your friend. You're not listening to the material. And that's what you have. You've got the video and the text. I'm trying to help you with this, but people, You've got to pay attention to it. Open up your textbook, watch the video, and then we'll start on the text. So just go in there to learning.compuscholar.com and I believe slash MY for my, and that will take you to your sign in. You should be on chapter two, lesson one, watch the video. If the grades continue to be poor, then what we'll have to start doing is putting questions inside these videos, and that really will drag it out even longer. So let's put forth the effort so I don't have to go to that. Okay, so you've watched the video where they're discussing about the different types of software, software categories. We'll look at the text and get through that and just maybe go a little deeper than what the video did. First, though, I want us to look at, and you have to forgive the screen that's popping up there. You understand hardware is a physical component. Hardware is what you can physically touch and handle. That's what we talked about in the first chapter. The second chapter, though, is the software. And this is where it's a program of instructions. It's telling the computer what you want it to do, how you want to play the game, how the game is developed. All of this is important. And the neat thing is about programming, to write a program, all you need is a computer. You don't have to have massive amount of equipment, a good monitor, good computer, keyboard. Uh, that's all it takes. And there's a lot of people that are making a lot of money off of programming just with another decent computer. I, I know of people that they've write programs using a smartphone or a tablet. Uh, you don't have to have something big, but you want something that's comfortable for you. Anyway, let's move on with the categories. First off, system uh, software. This is the operating system. And they show here that you have Windows, you have Macintosh, you have Linux. All of those are operating systems. 
there is some debate whether Chrome is considered a system software because Chrome actually is based off of Linux. It was modified and adapted for what they were wanting to do, but it's got uh, the, the core of it is Linux. Um, and then you've got operating systems for your, your smartphones, your tablets. Those are different type operating systems. Applications. Now, this is what many of you are familiar with. You use this when you're playing Call of Duty, when you're doing uh, Microsoft Word. Those are applications. And this is where you're actually giving a certain, a specific set of commands to the computer to execute. And they run through the CPU and the RAM, the hard drive. All those were the hardware devices that we talked about in the previous chapter. And then uh, while most compute, computer users work with applications and operating systems, other specialized programs may run in the background without much notice or installed by advanced users to develop new. So what they're saying is, while you see your operating system here on the surface where you work with it, there are thousands of programs running in the background. And this is critical that you understand this. Um, they don't sit there and make even a game. While it's one massive program in the end, they break it up in small chunks to achieve what needs to be done. And often the main program will sit there and say, well, when you went to this location, you opened, you found, you discovered the Easter egg. Well, now it's opening up another program here in the background that works or deals with this Easter egg. And so you're going to have to sit there and someone wrote that code just for that Easter egg. And they may have nothing else that they do in the program, but work with Easter eggs. Or they may be one of the main programmers that work with the development of the overall code. So think about all this. Utilities, again, these are applications that serve a purpose such as an antivirus, malware, backup programs, firewalls. All of these utilities are part of your operating system. It's just many of these utilities, you choose which one you want. You choose the antivirus software you want to put in the system, and then it's running in the background. Um, computer code can be written in, in a number of different programming languages. This is important. Let's read this again. Computer code can be written in a number of different programming languages. Just like humans have English, French, Spanish, and other spoken languages, computers can run programs written in code languages, such as C++ or Java, Python, all of those are programming languages. Programming languages are a tool. And when you're working on a task, you want to use the right tool. And some tools are better. Some tools are more math involved. And so if I'm sitting here doing something as a research project that involves math, I want to use that program. JavaScript really isn't written for math. It's more for a web page. So I wouldn't want to try to use JavaScript when C++ would probably be more appropriate for what I'm trying to do. So you have to understand each one of these programs. And that's why a good programmer can type up different programs in different languages. They learn more than just one program language because you need to know which tool is the right tool for what you're trying to do. So anyway, let's look over here. These three categories, system software, applications, and utilities and programming tools. So there's three categories right here. Each one of those should be in your word bank. You really should be getting up to 25 or more words in your word bank. Go back, take care of that. We're here at the end of the first six weeks. This would be a great opportunity for me to test you 
on that word bank. That would really help some of you that did very poorly on chapter one tests, bring that test grade up by doing well with the word bank. Anyway, think carefully about these three different categories. What's the difference? Think about that. And then think about your favorite applications towards the end of your uh, Google Classroom. I have a question in there asking you things such as, what is your favorite application and which programs do you use every day? Which programs do you use for school? Which ones do you use for at home? Things like that can really make, give you a better understanding of how these play. Well, anyway, hope you're doing well. Stay safe. Please respect each other. Wear your mask correctly. If you're not covering your nose, you're not wearing your mask. Respect yourself. Respect the students around you. And most importantly, respect your family. And let's stay healthy. I hope you're, I hope you're doing well. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.